Lord's Voice channel. I am very happy to see you and to deliver a small message on our women in the Bible through Lord's Voice channel. So I thank the sisters and thank the people who are viewing our channel. Please, um, I request you to make it to subscribe the channel and you share with all your friends and relatives so that people will be spiritually empowered. So friends, uh, in the Lord, I am associating myself with you through this channel and I wish you each and every one um, the goodness and the grace of the Lord be with you. The, we have started a series that is women in the Bible. So we will find so many women whether they are nameless or given name, given details. Sometimes some women they don't have any details but identified and unidentified women personalities we are going to bring them so that we will learn some lessons from the women who were written in the Bible. So this on this series right now <clears throat> I would like to um, present Lopped by Sarah. Sarah as a lawfer. We will find Sarah in the Bible in various places. So the lesson from the life of Sarah in the Bible are all very interesting because her story is filled with so much drama. It is hard to separate her from her Hogger, the slave and her husband Abraham. When we remember uh, her Abraham's and Sarah's life history, years and years they were like nomads and with their life journey she learned so many things from Abraham and we know Abraham was hailed from the family of Terahu who doesn't know anything about the living God Jehovah. So they came from very uh, um, they, they came from a very um, gentle family but even then Abraham and Sarah were called in, the, in this age or after the um, flood we said the Lord said because when he believed the Lord he, that became a righteousness and so father Abraham called as a father of faith and father of righteousness so we can learn many things because they are wandering with their whatever they have on um, the herds slaves servants and possessions with all this he was so rich but has to find a promised place by God so he has wandered and wandered in all uh, this journey Sarah get frustrated and tired of waiting so she decides to use her slave Hagar as a surrogate Later, Hagar's attitude towards Sarah was a bit different and uh, then after she became pregnant she had a low look about Sarah and Sarah was frustrated and she abused him and she kicked her out so that the slave Hagar came out of the family. We can find many passages about Sarah in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. If you look at Genesis from 11th chapter to 21st chapter, we can find many things about Sarah. Genesis 11th chapter, 16th chapter, 24th chapter and Isaiah uh, 51 chapter. In the New Testament, we can find Ro Romans, the epistles of Romans, 4th chapter, 9th chapter and Hebrews 11, when you list out the 
heroes and uh, heroines of the faith sarah's name was written along with the other women in the bible and first peter 3 third chapter 6 verse and galatians fourth chapter also they dealt with the saint paul dealt about abraham and and also sarah so we can see how sarah's life started though abraham and sarah had the same father terahu but their mothers were mothers were different Abraham's mother was different and Sarah's mother was Edna so she was like a half sister to him that's why Abraham in many ways when you look at the uh, king Pharaoh's house and the king Abimelech there we can find that he asked Sarah to say that he is he was he, she was his sister so now when then Sarah was frustrated with whatever the fear about abraham's life uh, even then she was a very supportive wife to abraham so how sarah's name was we see that sarah uh, as per the torah she was not an ordinary woman she was very beautiful and uh, she had two names one is eshika eshika means to see but the uh, later uh, she when she heard the word of god she was uh prophesied about god then she realized and then she her name was given as a sarai sarai means uh, uh, the, this not a contentious place but whereas god has changed her name later abram as abraham and sarai as sara so sara means princess so that her name was changed because she is going to become the mother of many nations god prepared her by changing her name sarah we can see as she is a beautiful and uh, uh, as torah says that she is uh, since her childhood she was like a prophet and uh, she was very strong in faith but later we can see her faith was deviated when she was become barren women but the even then uh, throughout her life journey she has learned so many lessons uh, with all her imperfections even with all her weaknesses but even then she stood as uh, the heroine of faith uh, when you look at the hebrews 11 chapter sarah's father was terah and her mother was edna when she had her baby boy isaac her age is not as simple as we had but she her age was 90 years old and abraham's age is 100 years old at that time nobody expects children but she has to wait on god's promise and god's word was fulfilled that is her dream she had so much insecurity about her barrenness so she is always worrying about her that's why she forced her slave uh, hagar to be become a surrogate mother so we can see the uh, nowadays we can see you, you know, in our life we re- remember sarah's life waiting waiting patiently for god to work maybe one of the most difficult experience of our christian walk we we can believe the word of god we can believe the uh, promise of god but we have to wait how it takes time the fulfillment of the prophecy or the word of god so we are living in an age of immediate we want to see whatever the things whether it is shortcut or any any way we want to be done within a very short time we don't have patience and we don't want to wait for anything so we are living in such ways but we have to remember sarah's life how her life um, what are the lessons we have to learn from her we have to check out so she was uh, uh, nowadays we are great do it yourself we are not waiting for god to involve or to interfere in our life but we want to do it uh, as a selfie 
we want to be do it our own selves so we are always trying to take god's decision in our life and we are acting as per our own decision that's why we are facing so many troubles so many uh, worries so much of uh, difficulties and so much of discomfort in our life so we and we remember oh, the uh, how god has uh, uh, issued uh, that the savior of the world will come we can see that abraham will bring out the only savior so from his dynasty the savior the lord jesus has come to this world and gave his is everything for us and he died on the cross and he saved us our sins and he gave us the eternity eternal life so dear brothers and sisters remember that god has his own time table and rest in the assurance that he loves you and will fulfill his promises to you psalms 27 chapter 14th verse psalms 130 chapter 5th verse isaiah 30 18th verse mika 7 7 verse so when when our heart is filled with so many desires and there is no way we don't find any way Uh, which are not um, putting into the formation there is no way of doing things then how how can we wait upon the promises we have so many desires but we have the assurance of god's word but the things are not happening in the right time how you can wait we have to remember the sarah's life so if you just pray the lord and read the word of god and having fellowship with the people god's people and most of the time when you read the the um, various books on the faith then our faith will stand so here we can see what kind of things we have to learn from sarah is that uh, we have to um sarah is so beautiful and she had so many she is like any other human being and so she has a positive as well as a negative attitudes qualities in her blood but when we look at this genesis 21st chapter 6th verse and sarah said god hath made me to love so that all that here will love with me when she was conceived and delivered a boy at the age of 90 years she said people will love when god the triunion god visited abraham and sarah at the um, in his tent sarah when heard about these words she laughed but god said nothing is impossible with me anything is hard for god so he said he promised abraham that so many times he recurred he recurring the promise of god and he told him that he will bring forth the promise in his real time so that real time came and she brought up the son at that time so we have to find out what are the uh, positive things with uh, shara is she first she is the heroine in, of faith the second thing is she is a beautiful woman she is more than the beauty of rachel and uh, esther and she has and even abigail shara was a very submissive and supportive wife shara was a woman of faith and also we can see um uh, shara was very hospitable and she is in a very expert in home management at the same time uh, she has a great capacity of forgiveness so she forgave hagar and allowed her and even then we can see in many ways she forgave abraham also 
So we can see that, but even in spite of all positive things, she has a negative thing also. What are the weakness of Sarah in the Bible? One thing that is Sarah is not a perfect being. She is imperfect being and she did not accept responsibility. Sarah was angry and selfish and a very cruel. She abused the slave Hagar and also Sarah was in a, uh, in a, a very doubtful about her husband and uh, sometimes with the slave also. And we cannot predict the married life. Even in our life also something happened. We can predict our married life but it is very unpredictable. But we have to depend on God so that God will fulfill and his peace will come into our families. Don't try to help God and don't um, uh, run ahead of him. Salasalu. Um, many times we are doing that, uh, we want to take the decisions in spite of God's decision. We are never care for about God's decision, God's will and we want to take our own decision. So that waiting in faith is not a easy task for us in nowadays. So we want to, anything should be done very fast. But waiting in faith can be a tiresome and a very discouraging. So we need patience. So the main lesson from Sarah is leave a legacy of faith. Leave a legacy of faith in your family, in your church and in your community. This, this small message I would like to thank you all of you and to learn patience and enduring patience, a persistent patience in our life so that God's blessings will work out and we will honor God's word then naturally we will be blessed. I wish you all the best. God bless you.